Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name for your goodness, for your love. We thank you for all the things you are doing. Baba wa tin be loran adupe lowo yin fun isore yin fun ife yin adupe lowo yin fun gbogbo ti ense You are worthy of our praise you are worthy of our worship because we know that you are the great almighty all sufficient one Eyin ni ope wa to si ba kan na ni eyin ni ijosin wa to si tori pe awon mo pe eyin ni olorun olodumare We always have confidence in coming before you because we know that whatever be the need whatever the, whatever be the request you are able to meet everything O kan wa ma nba le ni gba gbogbo ti a ba wa suwaju we know assuredly we have confidence that your love will never fail your word will never fail and your goodness unto us will go on from generation to generation you have called us together so that whatever spiritual needs we have whatever physical or material needs we have you can be of help you can meet them ekwe wa jo papo ki o ba le je wi pe o nkan to ba je ani wa boya ni patara ni tabi ni patemi ki eyin ki o le pe se won fun wa we are praying that you encourage everyone's faith tonight once again in jesus name an gba dura pe ki eru igbagbo olukuluku soke loni ni oruko jesus we are praying oh lord that you get us closer to yourself so that we will know you more understand you more rely on your promises more and have our prayers answered more and more an gba dura pe lasale ki eran olukuluku wa lowo ki we are dependent upon you. There is no other place for us to go. There is no other one for us to depend upon. You are the one that has called us and to you we have come. And we pray, Lord, that none of us will be so foolish as to go and rely on the arms of flesh or go and rely on things that cannot save, things that cannot heal, things that cannot deliver and gba dura pe ki o ma se eni keni laarin wa ti o ya omugo to be ge lati tun lo gbe kele nti ki gba ni la lati lo tun be gbe kele nti ko le wo ni san ti ko si le dani ni de our prayer is that you help us to uh, pray so much and pray with faith until the requests are granted agba dura pe ki eran wa lowo lona lopopopo to be ge ti a fi le gba dura titi a o fi da awon adura wa speak to our hearts even now e ba o kan wa soro bayi increase our faith even now e mu igbagbo wa dagba us all to depend upon you more even now and to bring all our complaints all our problems all our difficulties all our sorrows and suffering before you we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray the message we have tonight is something that every child of God should be interested in. Our very existence depends upon God. Our life depends upon God. Our progress, our success, our joy, our happiness depends upon God. After all, I'm sure you know that God created us and brought us into this world. And God doesn't do anything without a purpose. So then when he brought us into this place, he had a purpose in mind. And it should be in our interest that we should be asking God, Oh Lord, what is that purpose? Why am I here? What do you want me to achieve spiritually, physically, or any way as I am here in the world? And then to be sure we do not walk ahead of God. We do not run ahead of God. And we do not do anything that is contrary to the purpose for which he established us here. In Psalm 100 and verse 3. Psalm 100 verse 3. Know ye that the Lord he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves we are his people 
and the sheep of his pasture. Ki e yin ki o mo pe Oluwa ohun ni Olorun ohun ni o da wa ti re le awa se awa le eniyan re ati agontan papa re. This is telling us that we do not live like orphans in this world. Ele lo n so fun wa wi pe a ki igbenu aye yi gege bi oma lai ni baba. We shouldn't allow ourselves to be so dejected, to be so sorrowful, to be so hopeless. We should understand God made us, he established us here, he placed us here. E yi lo n fi wa lo kan bale wi pe a ko gbodo wonu irewe si okan tabi aini reti an lati fo kan bale gba ngba wi pe olorun lo da wa on lo si fi ese wa mule ti o fi wa si yin he says we are his people and the sheep of his pasture o so pe awa le eniyan re ati agotan papa re when he says we we are his people that is he made us well it has reference to two areas of our existence nigba ti o so pe awa le eniyan re iye ni pe on lo se da wa o si ni se pelu ipa meji ninu aye wa a person may be a sinner who has never known the lord as his personal savior eyan le je lese ti ko ti mo oluwa gege bi oluwa ti olugbala re and maybe you are here today in this congregation but you see wala arin ero to wa ni lo ni you really have never known the lord as your personal savior o ko ti mo oluwa gege bi oluwa ti olugbala re but you are sure to know this that he made you and you did not make yourself o si ye ko mo eyi daju wi pe ohun lo da o iwo ko lo daara re and in acts of the apostles chapter 17 ninu isi awon aposteli ori iketa di ni ogun while paul the apostle was talking to the people that did not know god as yet nigbati paul aposteli n ba awon eniyan ti o tin mo lorun soro the people that didn't know the only true god through the lord jesus christ is beloved son awon ti won kun mo lorun otito nipase omo re kan soso jesus christ omo bibi re in acts chapter 17 verse 23 ninu isi awon aposteli ori keta ni logun ese iketa le logun chapter 17 of acts verse 23 isi awon aposteli ori keta ni logun ese iketa le logun first i passed by and beheld your devotions i found an altar with this inscription to the unknown god whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him declare i unto you nitori bi mo tin koja lo ti mo si wo ohun oni ti eyin sin mo si ri pepe kan ti ako akole yi si fun olorun aimo nje eni ti eyin sin le aimo o na le emi so fun yin so then the people that paul the apostle addressed here were people who had not known god nitori na eni ti paul at postel in verse oro ni won je awon ti won o ti mo olorun rara but see what he told them in the very next verse God that made the world and all the things therein, seeing that He is the Lord of heaven and earth, and dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Allah ona ti o da ye ati ongo botin veni nore ona ti se oluwa ona ye ki be ille ti afi o wako. Then in verse 28 he says for in him we live and move and have our being. Ni ese ikeji di ni ogbon ni o ti wa so pe ni tori ninu re le awa gbe wa ti le aye ati ti awa rin ti a si le emi wa. So that means even if you have not known God as a personal savior your existence depends upon him. Your life depends upon him. The fact that you are sleeping and waking up and going up and going down is because of the goodness and the love and the mercy of God. Ni tori na ti o ko ba ti mo luwa gege bi oluwa ti olugbala re. O ye ke yo da oloju pe wi wa to wa laaye owo re lo wa aye anfani to ni lati ma lo soke lo sodo to nsun to nji agbara re lo npo omo nitori na o je to luwa so what we are read in some 100 verse 3 that he made us and not we ourselves that refers to all of us in general nitori na ti a ti wa ka ninu orin ogorun ese iketa pe on lo da wa ti re ni awa se iyen to ka si ko gbo wa lapapo but then it says we are his people and the sheep of his pasture sugbo wa so pe awa ni eniyan re ati agotan papa re now for those of us who have relationship with the lord nitori awa ti awa ni ba se pe lo oluwa and you can say that the lord is my shepherd we are the sheep of his pasture we are his people ti o si lo le so wi pe oluwa ni so agotan mi awa ni agotan papa re and so you understand that there's a special relationship that God has with you if you are a child of God if you have known God through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior o si wa ye ke yoyi ogba ngba wi pe oni iba se po ti o yi ato ti o si ya gede gede nigba ti o ba ti ma Jesus ni oluwa ti olugbala re and the Lord has given such people promises in his word olorun si ti fun awon eru eyan be ni awon ileri ninu oro re and of course he has given all his creatures all people that are created by him even those who are not born again He has given all of us 
promises in his word. Bakana nyo si jayi kwe ati awan to molu wawo ati awan ti o molu wawo gogo awan ti o je e da wawore. O ni awan e le rifu wani no awawore. You will be surprised the promises God makes to all the people that have never known him. E no ti e ya o ti o bari o kwa lokwa e le riti o lano se fwa awan ti o ti le ti ima. You will be so surprised as you look at the Bible the promises that God has made that he delights in their joy. He delights in their salvation. He delights in their repentance. You will be surprised the wonderful things he says to those who are not born again if they would only come and give themselves unto the Lord. And you ya o ni ba ti o ba ri opo lopo ile ri ti Olorun se fun awon ti won o ti e ti mo wi pe Olorun fe ki won ki o ni ayo Olorun fe ki won ki o de ni igbala Olorun fe ki ojo e waju won ko serere ti won yo ba le igba anfani na lati ronu ku ada ki won o to wa ki won si gba ni Oluwa to igbala won That is why you find in the Old Testament God the Father calling the sinners come unto me I di ni ti o fi le ri no ma je mu lai lai Come and let us reason together. Come and eat the fatness, and your soul shall delight in me. Come and seek the Lord while there is opportunity. Come and look unto him and be ye saved all the ends of the earth. He gives us promises because he made us. He created all. That is why you find even Jesus Christ, the Son of God, telling us in the New Testament, Come unto me, ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The Father says, Come. The Son says, Come. And then we are told in the very last chapter of the New Testament, that's Revelation chapter 22, the Spirit and the that's the whole triune God, the, the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost telling the sinner, you don't have to perish, God delights in you, come unto the Lord. And then the moment you come already a promise is waiting for you if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness he that comes unto me I will in no wise cast off come and you shall find rest unto your soul and you see God has promises for everyone. And the moment you enter into the kingdom of God, what great promises you already have. Once you become a child of God, fear not little love because it is your father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. Promises waiting for you. Ask and you shall receive receive, see, can you shall find, and no can it shall be opened unto you. The moment you enter into the kingdom of God, the promises of God waiting for you, and the word of God telling you that if you will ask in my name, that's the name of Jesus, that he will give you whatsoever you ask him. That's why tonight I'm talking to you on the title of a particular song, you know, the common song that we normally sing concerning the promise of God. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God. And here is what will make your life happy. Here is what will make you successful. Because you see, God has promises for us for the present life. Every new day in your life, there is a new promise of God from the Bible that can support you, that can uphold you for that new day. 
ni yonju ni nwa jwa ye re, olor ni awan ele rikan, ki o ni sekwe lu o jonye, ti o si le gwe oro fwa jona. Every new challenge that comes upon your life, there is a promise of God that is able to meet that challenge. Gwo gwe kwe ni jato ba dojo kwa ye re, ni o jokwa kan, olor ni awan ele rito le bori, i kwe ni jwa wanyi. Every new conflict, every new temptation, every new battle that arises in your life, there is a promise of God that is waiting for you, able to clear you from all the conflict and all the battle. Gwo gwe do ju ko gbo gbo ogun gbo gbo ejakadi to ba doju ko aye re ni otun olorun ni awon ileri ti o le mu e doju ko awon ipenija na ti o si je ko obori won every new adversary every new enemy every new demon every new affliction that may rise up or raise its ugly head to uh, to go against your life or to hinder your progress there is a promise of god awaiting you to deal with that enemy to deal with that problem gbo gbo awon ota gbo gbo awon adoju ko ni gbo gbo awon wahala to ba doju ko aye re awon oro olorun ti wa to ti se leri ti o le yanju gbogbo awon wahala ati ota to ba doju ko emi re every new opportunity in your life every new possibility every new privilege in your life there is a promise of god that is to strengthen you to equip you to make you face that new opportunity and be able to have a fulfillment in your life gbogbo awon afani otun gbogbo ase yori otun to ba wo oju to ba doju ko aye re ti olorun si ti se to fun aye re olorun ni awon ileri kan to si le yanju gbogbo awon for every attack of the devil, for every arrow from the devil, for the for the darts coming from Satan to attack your life and to pull you down, to knock you down, there is a promise of God that's available for you to make you an overcomer, to make you conquer. Go go attack, or let your daughter wa go go fa, let your daughter wa go go ipin ma awe ni okonkon, let your daughter wa to le fe doju kwa yere koswe di edwa ni le olorun ti ni le ri kan ni pato ele to le yaju go go awo tana to le jeko bo. Every kind of uh, temptation, every type of temptation, any kind of temptation that comes to you, there is a promise in the word of God to make you stand and stand firm on not defeated by the devil, but you become an overcomer. There's always a promise awaiting you. Go go e down wo, to ba le wa si waju aye re, go go e yiri wo, to ba le wa si nu aye re, olorun ti ni awon ileri kan to le je pe to ba ti gba ileri yego wa le duro, wa le duro sinsin lati le bori esu ko ma di edun arin le. We pass through many stages in life. Opolopo igbala ma ri na aye wa. At times you feel that you are young. Igba mira wa ri pe oje odo. Young in age and young in the law. Do you know that at such a stage in your life, when you are young, when you are just a babe in the Lord, there are promises of God that will give you assurance, that will give you confidence, that will keep you standing, that will keep you victorious. You are not married yet as a woman, you are not married yet as a man, and there are some peculiar problems confronting those who are not married do you know that even in that situation and in that state there is a promise of god or there are promises of god that will keep you fit and make you the person you ought to be o je ma o ti iloko tabi oko ti ilaya nigba ti o ba wa ni iru ipo bayi ti oko ti iloko ti oko ti ilaya awon nkan kan wa to ma n doju ko eru awon eyan to ba wa ni iru ipo be o je wa fo kan bale wi pe awon ileri olorun kan wa fun iru awon eyan to wa ni iru ipo be lati je ki o je eni ti o je ko je gan my brother my sister the moment you marry it appears life changes you see what the way you were living before and the conveniences you had before the comfort you had before things change some new people come into your life that were not there before the in-laws and the people and the friends of the husband and the friends of the wife a lot of things change toko anati yawo anati awon orisirisi ore ati yawo toko gbogbo nkan wa yi pada lojiji in that new state in your life there are promises you know all you need to do is just look at the word of god and say which promise of god is meant for this new state in which i find myself ninu ipo to 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 wa wa yi o je mo pe oro olorun ni ileri fun o on to ye ko se ni pe ko gbe oro olorun ko ye wo pe iru ipo to to ti mo wa yi kini ileri olorun fun mi every new day it appears you may meet a new condition even a new person and these new people that we meet, they are either here or there. They are either good or bad. They are either helpful or they hinder. Whatever it is, whatever their inclination and their intention against your life or for your life, there is always a promise of God you can depend upon. <laughs> 
awon eyan tun tun a wonu aye re awon ka wa ni awon kon wa lohun awon ka je ran lowo awon ka je olude na ni ru iru akoko to dabi eni pe o ba iru iko baye pade on to je mo ni pe oro olorun ni awon ileri fun o to le je ki o je asegun one of the greatest comforts in a believer's life is to know that there are promises of god meant for the present life o kan to je itunu ninu igbaye oni gbagbo ni gbogbo oju aye re ni pe ki o ma ma wi pe ileri olorun kan wa fun aye sisin yi fun it is not only that you know even after we die and we go beyond the grave are you not surprised that in the bible even god has preserved for us promises that will carry us through promises of what we're going to enjoy even when we leave this world and so we know from all the indications of the bible we know from what how god dealt with other people that had gone before us that we can stand on the promises of god what if uh, it were possible that i wasn't preaching to Day, what if it were possible I could bring some people in the Bible days to you to testify unto you? I believe that the conclusion of their testimony will be to say, Brethren, stand on the promises of God. Let's try to picture the way it will look if Abraham were to come here. And Abraham were to give his own testimony. How God gave him a promise that at old age he will have a son. Let's picture Abraham telling us about the condition of his body and in his uh, gentle voice and low voice as an old man in his low voice he begins to tell us how dead the body was and i want you to picture sarah coming just at that time beside him and with all face wrinkled but with a smile and all the air already white and saying oh yes that is true i was also so old i never knew that anything could take place and then here comes the response to all their testimony they lift up this little boy isaac and say this is the evidence that god is a faithful god and they conclude their testimony by telling you brethren stand on the promises of god we generally give time for more than one testimony when we have time here comes moses and here comes moses talking about the promise of god not just to one individual but for the whole nation of the children of israel that these children of Israel were under oppression. And he begins to describe the affliction and the oppression because he was there. He saw them when they were being beaten. Here comes Moses and describes the oppression. And in the palace when they were planning in a conspiracy, how they will deal with those children of Israel because he grew up in the palace. He knew what they were saying. And then among those young Egyptians that were learning in the science and the learning of the Egyptians, what they were planning in school, that the political system, when they grow up, this is how they are going to oppress the children of Israel. They will never let them go and be free people. Moses knew it all. And 
to nke ko ni ma science ni le eko awon ara Egypt ni gba na gbogbo eyin koro yin won gbogbo eto won pe ta ba gba ijoba ba wo yo se ko Israeli loju ni ta won ni je ki won ko lo Mose ma gbogbo re and then he begins to tell you all wicked uh, pharaoh was that pharaoh will not let the people go ko bere si salaye bi pharaoh se je olubi si pe ohun ki yo je ki awon yan na lo and then Moses begins to talk of the promise of God that he made to Abraham ki Moses o bere si wa ma so gbogbo awon ile ri olorun ti olorun se fun Abraham and these people are going to leave the land of Egypt. They will become a great nation. They will become a mighty nation. They will be heard of in all other nations. And then Moses, in, in trying to conclude his testimony, he says, well, you know how God fulfilled that. That in almost all the books of the Bible, you have the name Israel. That nation Israel has been known in all generations now and by all people now. Pe o fere je pe ni gbogbo oju ewe to wa ni no bibeli latin daruko Israeli Israeli ati pe orilede Israeli yi o fere je pe gbogbo agbala aye lo ti ma bayi. And then he tells you in concluding his testimony and he says well for those of you who don't read the Bible and for those of you who don't see the name of Israel in the Bible look at your newspapers and all in the, all the newspapers all over the world you have the name of Israel and you have that nation still there today because of the promises of God and he says but the end of the old thing is that stand on the promises of God. And then here comes a multitude of people lining up to give their testimony. The prophets of the Old Testament. The patriarchs of the Old Testament. The princes of the Old Testament. And a lot of people from the Old Testament. And here come some people that were not even Israelites. Coming from Moab. Or coming from, the, coming from Jericho. Telling us that the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. And then the door just opened. And then we see a multitude of people coming from the New Testament era. The people that met Jesus Christ. The people that touched the M of his garment. The people that called him Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. The people that came on crutches. Those who were blind. Those who were demon possessed. Those who were terrible sinners. Those who are just roaming about wondrous in this world. And they, when they met Jesus Christ according to the promise of God, it changed them from a non-entity and it changed them to somebody in the kingdom of God. And all these multitudes of people from the Old and the New Testament, they conclude their testimony like this. They say from what God has done. The fact that he has never failed. They point to you. And they say whatever mountain you have. Whatever affliction you have. Whatever sickness is raging in your body. Whatever enemies are running around to destroy you. Whatever fire is trying to burn you and consume you. Whatever sea of the enemy is trying to drown you. Whatever battle, whatever conflict. Whatever thought and whatever fear you have. They say that all we can tell you it is safe and it is right and it is profitable to stand on the promises of God. My brothers and sisters here tonight, I want to challenge you to stand on the promises of God. In 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 56. 
first kings chapter 8 and verse 56 i want back in ni ori kejo ese ikeni de ni ogota open it in your bible and mark it in your bible si ninu bibeli re ko si fala si ni dinu bibeli re it should be the foundation under the under your faith ele lo gbodo je ipile ti igbagbo re du ole lori storm the storm may come ijile wa o the wind may blow ijile ma ja and the floods may beat against your house of faith o le da bi eni pe iru mi o da bi en ko nko lo oko igbagbo if you base your faith on this foundation, nothing will shake the foundation of your faith. Enemies may come. Satan may whisper. Let your faith stand on the foundation on the word of God. Do you know uh, Martin Luther? That man was a practical man. He's been called the reformer because you see it was very central to the reformation that took place abroad the protestant church you see because of the greatness of the work that god gave him to do there was a time that he was writing and this time he was writing you know writing scriptures writing message and wanting the people to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ni akoko yi o nko iwa su o nko awon awe o fe ki awon eyan ki o gba Jesu Christ Oluwa gbo. It appears that the devil came in his real person. O wa da be ni pe Jesu o yoju si lojuko oju at a particular place at the wall. Ni bi kan lara ogiri and he was uh, when the world was writing the devil was wanting to torment him wanting to afflict him wanting to put doubt in his mind. Bi o se nko we yi Jesu fe pa loju Jesu fe mu iye meji wa sinu okan re. Those were the times they were using the normal pen with an ink bottle that you will put the pen in the ink bottle and write a little and put it in the ink bottle again and write a little you, you know that if you are old enough to remember before virus and fountain pens came but the the devil appeared like that. This man was so bold in faith. He took the bottle of ink. Threw it at him. And said, devil, I have nothing to do with you. Do you know that till today? If you go to that place where Martin Luther was at that time, you will see the mark of that ink on that wall. The people they refused to paint the place, they refused to touch the place. They said that was the, to show the fierceness of the anger and the wrath of Martin Luther against the devil, saying, We have nothing to do in common, get out of there. And when the devil had to get away from him, and that man did the work. God has appointed him to do. Let your faith be based on the foundation of the word of God because we know God will never fail. You know it already. If you are sick, there's no problem. We have the myriads of promises in the Bible that God will heal you. What are you going through? That the promises of God will not cover. Stand on the promises of God. In 1st King chapter 8 verse 56, Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses a servant. Ko kwa orokan, ni nou gbo gbo e le ri re 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 re. 
Can you say this without having some joy in your heart? Without being excited, you are a child of God. Can you say this without being happy that you are a follower of Jesus Christ? Here is Solomon telling all the children of Israel. He said, Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Which has given rest unto his people Israel. Oh, if Moses could have heard those words. What Moses would have thought about. He would have thought, look at the plan of Pharaoh. Look at the plan of all those his horsemen. Look at the thought of the unbelievers, the Gentiles, thinking that we're going to join the, in the Red Sea. Look at the thought of the mixed multitude, thinking that as we're going through the wilderness, there was no hope. And Joshua also said, Moses, you know what? The, the people in Jericho, they thought we will never enter. And those people in Ai, they thought they were going to destroy us. And then all the judges, they support. And they said all those Philistines and the Amorites and the Midianites, they thought that the people of Israel will never settle down. And so they all joined the chorus of a joyful singing unto the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. That has given rest unto his people Israel. Brothers and sisters, if you can stand on the promises of God, there's nothing to worry about. You too will see. Sister, if you can stand on the promises of God, Pharaoh might be telling you. Or the horsemen might be telling you. Or the circumstances of the Red Sea might be telling you. And those people, wicked people at Jericho might be telling you. You will never find a home where you can rest. That you will never find a home, you'll never get married, you'll just be like that, and shifting from this accommodation to that accommodation, there will be no rest for you. But remember, the devil is a liar. The devil, remember that all those braggings of Pharaoh and his horsemen, they are empty. They have no way to stand. If you will stand on the promises of God, my dear sister, you will discover, blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people. How did he give rest unto his people? According to all that he promised. According to all that he promised. I give you the responsibility to begin to find those promises that are meant for your life. Be searching, don't search for problems, search for promises. Don't magnify your problem, magnify the promises. Don't look at your mountain, even if the mountain is there, eh, look away from the mountain and go and look for the promise that will match that mountain and remove that mountain. And so you will stand on the promises of God. And the promises of God will never fail. Because you see, it says, Blessed be the Lord who has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. Well, here is the way to success. Here is the way to victory. Here is the way to satisfaction. Here is the way to our healing. Here is the way to our deliverance. Here is the way to enjoy the 
the Christian life. Here is the way to overcome the enemy. Here is the way that the plan of God for your life will not be hindered or limited or disturbed by anybody, by anything. You know, if we fail, it's because we didn't search out the promises, we didn't stand on the promises. If you are sick, find time to search for promises of God that promises you healing. If you are confused, find time to search for the promises of God that will give you steadfastness and stability in your soul. If you are tired and weak spiritually, you don't know whether to continue, how to continue, find time to search for the promises of God that will strengthen you in your weakness. If you are tired and weak spiritually, you don't know whether to continue, how to continue, and fearful, find time to search for the promises of God that will give you boldness, that will give you confidence in God. Don't wait until the attack, if there's any affliction, the devil is trying to dribble you, if the devil is trying to torment your life, find time to just search for the promises of God, and when you find those promises of God, stand on the promises of God, they will never fail. It says he has given rest to his people according to all that he promised. He says there has not failed one word of all his good promise. You see that? There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses a servant. I believe that the promises of God are still true today. We cannot lose, we cannot fail, we cannot, we cannot, fail, we cannot be defeated if we stand on the promises of God. When you stand on the promises of God, you will be like a person that is standing on a solid ground. You, you, you are not afraid. You know, sometimes imagine yourself, you are standing on a very solid ground heavy bridge and there, there's water on side you look at the right there is water you look at the left there is water everywhere there's water but you are standing on that solid bridge you are not afraid because you cannot swim because the water cannot touch you you are standing on the bridge you will see the crocodiles in those rivers perhaps and see all those whales and those big fishes and you will see the waves tossing the ship up and down but that doesn't touch you because you are standing on the bridge. Why don't you stand from this day on the promises of God? If you know that if you look at a particular person, you'll be afraid, then don't look at him, look at the promises. When you think of a particular situation in your life, that thinking or that thought will bring fear in your heart, then don't think about it, think about the promises. You see that when you read a threatening letter, from a particular fellow that has been bragging and planning and, and cons uh, conspiring all these years when you read that letter uh, 
cold sweat will run through your body, then don't read it. Read the promises of God. If you know that anytime you see those masquerades and you see all those shrine people, you see all those uh, idol worshippers beating their drum and saying their incantation, it will make fear to grip you and to bind you. Then don't look at them. Then don't visit home when such festivals are going on. Concentrate on the promises of God that can never fail. You remember that prophet that cursed you and said it will never go well with you. You have left their, you have left their yard. You have left uh, all the rituals, ceremonies they're doing. They and cursed you every time. You remember confusion will come, doubt will come, uncertainty will come. Don't think about what that false prophet said. Look into the word of God and stand on the promises of God. That dream that you are carrying about, I had this dream, I had this dream every time. You remember that dream. Your thoughts will be seen, Satan will be seen, demons will be seen, people will be interpreting. They will say, that means this, that means this. It will bring fear of defeat in your life. Don't think about that dream. Concentrate on the promises of God. This is the way to have the victory. This is the way to be more than a conqueror. This is the way to be an overcomer whatever comes against your life. That you will have faith in God. In Mark chapter 11 reading from verse 22. These are the verses you need. If you are sick, these are the verses you need. If Satan is hindering your life, these are the verses you need. If the devil is threatening you that life is about to come to an end, that death is coming, this is these are the verses you need. If enemies are causing you in the dream and cursing you in the day, these are the verses you need. If your life is being wrecked by fear and timidity and it appears you cannot make any progress, these are the verses you need. If you have been telling yourself, I will never make it, I will never succeed, I will never live the Christian life, I can never pray, my prayers will never be answered. If you have already brought yourself on that defeat. These are the verses from the lips of Jesus Christ that you need. To ba je pe igba gbogbo lo so fu aye re wi pe ah n ko ro pe ma le sa se yori n ko ro pe onrere kan be ni waju fun mi n ko ro pe won ni se gun kankan to ba je pe iru awon nkan wa yi lo ti fi di ara re ni gbe kun eleyi ni oro to tenu Jesus Christ wa to si ni lo re. If there is a besetting sin that is keeping you down and the devil is saying you will never be free. You are going to go to hell. You are going to die in this condition and you want to be saved and you want to be restored and you don't want to remain a backslider. These are the verses of scripture that you need. Ti awon ese ti o rorun lati di mo ni to ba di maye re gbengben ti o tin so so fun pe o ni lo sorun o ni ni iya ni pekun to si dabi eni pe lokan ti re papa ohun ro po ko ni le ni de iya ni pekun sugbon ninu re lohun o fe de ni igbala o fe pada wa le gege bi asako awon ese ororun to to ni lo ni If you have been praying and fasting praying and fasting you fast and fast and fast until you almost become like a dry stick and yet the problems are still there the mountains are still there what will i do again 
again. I've told you tonight, this is what to do. These are your very verses that will get you out of that situation if you will stand on the promises of God. Mark 11 verse 22 And Jesus answering says unto them Have faith in God And the chariots of Pharaoh running after you to destroy you Have faith in God Are you so sick the doctor said they don't know what they are going to do Have faith in God have you been having accident every year? Last year, the other year, the other year, the other year, accident every time, and you are saying, What is all this? What have I done? How will I be how will I be redeemed and saved and rescued from this situation? Have faith in God. Because of the problem in the house, husband has run away. And husband said, I cannot bear this one. There's no money to feed children. There's no money to take care of the family. And I so run away. You don't even know where to find him now. And you say, what am I going to do? Hunger on the one side, poverty on the other one, mystery on the other side. The relatives are saying me, what have you done with your husband? Have you sacrificed him? Have faith in God. You stand on the promises of God tonight. That crime will come to an end. Stand on the promises of God tonight. That mountain will move. Stand on the promises of God tonight. God will lift you up from the dungeon, from the valley, will lift you up to the mountain top. If you will only believe, you will see the glory of God. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, 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 be thou removed and be cast into the sea, I shall not doubt it in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he say. He shall have whatsoever he say. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now tonight, whosoever shall say to this mountain, and are you there? The mountain of sin. Who is willing to say to this mountain be thou removed? The mountain of affliction. Who is willing to say to this mountain be thou removed? The mountain of poverty. The mountain of joblessness. The mountain of affliction. The mountain of demonic attack. Who is willing to stand up in all authority and in all boldness, standing on the promises of God, and say to this mountain be thou removed? Why are you just keeping quiet? Why do you want the mountain to fall upon you when there is authority in your mouth? When the power of God is in your heart, when the word of the Lord is in you, when the Lord is challenging you to say unto this mountain, it is not time to cry. It is not the time to be regretting. We children of God have authority within us. Say to this mountain tonight. Say to this mountain tonight. Say to this mountain tonight. Be thou removed. You will not destroy me. I will overcome. I am more than a conqueror. The promises of God are for me. I will live, I shall not die. I will be victorious. You mountain will not remain in 
my life. You sickness will not remain in my life. You sin will not remain in my life. The devil will not remain in my family. Your familiar spirit will not remain in these children. And all your troubles you are going to get away. Arise and say to your mountain. Arise and say to that mountain. Be, the, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And Jesus said, It shall be so. Yes, it shall be so. It shall be so. It shall be so. It shall be so. You will have whatever you say in the boldness of faith. Remember all through your life. Stand on the promises of God. I believe you have been blessed. Don't let this message die. Listen to it again and pass it to others. You can get more from God at the Deeper Life Bible Church. Our headquarters is Deeper Life Bible Church, Bagada, Lagos, Nigeria. Blessed are your ears for hearing these things. We'll meet in heaven if you do them. <laughs>